Hello everyone, Neil Bakoven here. Welcome back. For this final episode of Paleo Cave Art Mysteries, let me set the stage on one of my favorite cave stories. It was 1940 and France had been overrun and occupied by the Nazis. Four local teenage boys were out walking their dog, Robot, in a wooded part of southwestern France. Robot scampered ahead, but when the boys got there, he was gone. A quick search revealed that Robot had fallen into a deep hole. So some of the boys went back for paraffin lamps to be able to go down into the hole and rescue him. Besides wanting to get their dog, they were excited that the hole might lead into a tunnel to a nearby castle ruin. They might find treasure. Well, they rescued Robot and they did find treasure, but not the kind they expected. The boys had basically stumbled from Nazi-occupied France into the Paleolithic age. The hole led into a cave where they found the walls and ceiling covered with brightly colored paintings of animals that were no longer around, bison, aurochs, and lions. According to the boys, they ran around like savages, completely crazy. They said that in the flickering light, the painted animals seemed to be moving. Does that sound familiar? Well, what the boys had found were the beautiful 17,000-year-old paintings of Lascaux, some of the finest in Europe, more than 600 of them. We'll come back to the story about the boys, but for now, let's make a warp factor 10 jump to talking about the stars. Taurus the Bull is probably the oldest named constellation. It goes way back in prehistory and it's mentioned in ancient Greek, Sumerian, and Egyptian writings. The most recognizable part of Taurus is Pleiades, which ancient texts variously describe as having six or seven stars. Clear depictions of Pleiades date back at least 3,600 years, and it's mentioned in ancient texts like Homer's Iliad. Besides the Greeks and Sumerians, it shows up in ancient cultures all over the world, from Chinese to indigenous Australians to many Native American ones. Pleiades got its name from the Greek word to sail, since its arrival in the night sky marked the sailing season in the Mediterranean. So why am I telling you all this? Well, many researchers contend that the 17,000-year-old Lascaux paintings show Pleiades and other constellations. Rappengluck in 2002 made a strong case that Pleiades is represented on several of Lascaux's bulls. Remember Taurus, the bull? I don't think that's a coincidence. In the pictures, it shows up either within the animal or just above the shoulder. I'm convinced that he's right, that Pleiades is represented in Lascaux art. And I'm mostly won over that it got its connection with Taurus the bull there at Lascaux, or even earlier. Sweatman and Combs in 2018 took all this a step further using computer software to determine the position of constellations in the Paleolithic European night sky. They compared their star map with the cave images and found clear alignments. For instance, in the pictures, the tips of the horn and the eyes and legs outline the Taurus constellation with Pleiades ever present on the shoulder. They contend that many of the 600 pictures in Lascaux and much of the artwork elsewhere in Europe represent constellations and that the ancients used the images as a calendar for equinoxes and so forth. I remain to be convinced about all that, but this isn't as outrageous as it seems. 
Using only the same techniques available to our Paleolithic people, simple observation, the Aztecs developed intricate astronomical charts and they were able to predict events such as eclipses with great accuracy. The implications are astounding and once again steer us toward the conclusion that Paleolithic cultures were more advanced than we tend to think. What's not in cave art is also instructive. Curtis's book, The Cave Painters, mentions fish, insects, rodents, reptiles, birds, bats, and hyenas as being rare or absent in European paintings, although they were all common close associates of the humans. More about fish in a minute. It seems that prehistoric artists portrayed animals that their people highly valued or which had a special place in their culture. Also not shown often are landscape elements like trees, flowers, rivers, lakes, or caves. There are few images of the moon or sun, which I find odd. I can't leave the rock art topic without talking about Australia. There are more than 100,000 significant prehistoric rock art sites there, with more being found almost every day. Although Homo sapiens arrived in Australia at least 65,000 years ago, the oldest art scientifically dated so far is from a 17,300 year old mud dauber nest with other art probably much older and indirectly dated to more than 30,000 years. Both petroglyphs and drawings are common and vary widely from geometric shapes to images of humans and animals. Australian animal images on the whole feature a much higher percentage of humans than seen in Europe's caves. In fact, art older than 12,000 years there has about 80% of the figures showing up as human. Anthropologists suggest that the artists were showing their cultural beliefs, emphasizing their interactions with other humans and important animals. On a sad note, most cave art has been destroyed. Some of this has been by vandalism or cave collapse, mining activities and so forth. But the great bulk of the loss has come from sea level rise. Most humans tend to live near oceans and low river valleys, and sea levels have risen more than 400 feet in the last 20,000 years. In that geologically short period of time, coastal areas equaling the size of South America have been inundated, and any low-lying caves have been flooded. A great example of that is Cosquer Cave on the coast of France which used to be well above sea level, but whose entrance now is 120 feet below it. Although it still has nearly 500 beautiful paintings, researchers estimate that hundreds have been destroyed by the encroaching water. The inundation of lower lying caves almost certainly helps explain one of the oddities of paleo art that I mentioned earlier, the paucity of images of fish and sea life. Cosker is one of the few caves where images of seals, ox, and fish have been found. It's likely that many caves with pictures of sea and river animals have been flooded. From Africa to Australia to Europe, Asia, and the Americas, it's sad to think of all the wonderful sights and images that we'll never see due to the sea's destruction. That's all the more reason to cherish the caves with paleo art that still remain. I'll end this video with more on the story of the boys finding Lascaux Cave. Shortly after its discovery, Simon Koinkus, the one Jewish boy in the group, was apprehended and sent along with his parents to Buchenwald. The boy was rescued by the French Red Cross because he was under the age of 16. His parents weren't as lucky. They didn't survive the camp. I think it's a powerful juxtaposition 
Here's one person who saw the worst of humanity and the best. Simon is probably the only person on earth who witnessed both the horrors of Nazi genocide and the artistic beauty of the Paleolithic age. I'd like to dedicate this episode to Simon and his family. Well, that's what I have for you today. Before I close, let me say a few words about my books. The novels, Mach 2 and the Mammoth People and The People Eaters, are backed by the most up-to-date research I could find. Both start off with author's notes that talk about all the science and the research that went into the books. And both have about a hundred annotated references at the back. But I don't want you to get the idea that these are science books. They're just great, fun reads filled with action and adventure, sex and violence, drama and love stories, all the good stuff. I've also written a children's science book, When We Met Neanderthals. It's a colorful picture story of what may have happened when we met up with this other human species so long ago. Well, thanks for watching this video series. As you can tell, I'm fascinated by cave art, and I hope you found it interesting too. That's the end of this series. Please remember to hit the thumbs up, like button, and subscribe. Be on the lookout for my next video, which will start a series called Our Cannibalistic Past. It'll take you on a journey into our dark past that you'll never forget. See you next time.